hello and welcome to another video on abstract thesis series and in today's video we are going to discuss a newly released feature in power bi and that is new button slicer the new button slicer feature is released in november 2023 this is an addition on top of the slicer which is already present in power bi in November 2023 release, we have quite a few new features here, as you can see in the release notes. And one of the features which we have is a button slicer. And we also have a separate block for that, which I have already shown you. About this feature, what Microsoft has said, slicers are critical for any report, but unfortunately they haven't seen many updates since their creation. Many report creators have expressed frustration with the tile slicer rigidity and, and limited customization options to address this issue we are thrilled to launch button slicer so now you have button slicer and as you can see this seems really promising now you can see the agent name appearing in the tile slicer versus the agent name appearing in the button slicer it's a really good new enhancement and we're going to try this out today in power bi desktop so we are going to check it out how good it is what customization options are available and good thing is that this blog covers that into the details and i'm going to provide you the link for this blog in the description so these are the setup instruction uh, so one of the good thing is that you don't need to enable it in private public preview it is by default enabled but i'm going to still show you how can you enable in case it is not enabled for you so there is a new button slicer icon which you will get this is the older pane visualization pane and the position may change little bit in case you are using on object interaction i am using on object interaction and that's how you're going to get it at this place let me highlight that in the on object interaction you have categories and one of the category is slicer in that you are going to get it or once you create a visual then you can go ahead and change it from here in the visualization pane which appears in the type once done you can put a field and field will be shown like this just like very similar to the tile slicer different look and feel now you have a lot of customization options and one of the customization option is layout alignment then you have the shapes which you can make rounded and you can see they have rounded the top portion then you have number of rows and columns now depending on the height you can fix number of rows now how many columns you want in the width that you can decide space between the cards you can also play around then you have overflow which is basically continuous scroll or paginated then you have additional field which is as a label in this case they are showing email id we will try something else out then you can add images with the image url and i have created few images for you and i am going to give you the github url where these images are lying i have not given the faces i just have some icon images and you will be able to utilize those icon images while creating or testing this slicer so i have done the job for you to test it out and then there are interactivity options like single select show all which you can try out you have the multi select option also available and then there is a clear slicer option then tool tip you can also be shown so why don't we go ahead on power bi and explore this option out so let me jump onto the power bi i am here on the power bi so we have this common abstract thesis small file and usually it has a darker theme this time i created a lighter theme with white background and you can see that i already tested it out and these this is the image i was talking about which i created and they are available on github and then uh, i'm using a brand here and in, in the label i'm using some unicare characters so a little bit of difference we want to create so how do we are going to create this so the first thing i'm going to show you is where is this option available in case it is not enabled for you first of all make sure you are on november 2023 version so as you can see i am on november 2023 version next thing is files options and setting options under the preview feature you should see button slicer by default checked in case it is not checked check the button slicer 
and click on OK, it might require a restart of Power BI Desktop. Please do that. Let's start creating this button slicer now. So I create a new page and in this page, I'm going to add the slicer. So I'm using on object interaction. So you can see that under the home tab, I am able to see visualization. And from here, I'm going to add the new button slicer. This is the icon for that. Let me add that. And now it's asking for the fields. So let me add a field and the field which I'm going to add today is item brand. And I'll upload this file for you so that you are able to use this particular file. You have the unique air icon. You have the URLs images available and those images are coming from a public URL. So you will be able to use it. I will provide that URL into the description. So please check out description for that. Now it has created button and doesn't seem like very similar, but you have a lot of setting available. So let's explore with that setting. So click on this. I already have a format pane open. In case you don't find the format pane, you can click three dots format. Now sometimes the position may be upward or downward depending on how you have placed this visual in your page. Now also in case you are not, still you're not able to see, you can go to view and there you can enable the format pane and you should be able to see format pane. I have checked few things like always show pane switcher and always open in a new pane so that you know I am getting a new pane uh, for some of these things. Now let me click on the slicer and start. So the first option is size and style which I'm not going to play around padding. I'm leaving it it's other visual background. I can switch it off if I want the background color to dominate or visual borders. I, it's at the visual level so I'm going to leave it out title. I let it be there. brand title is there. Feature. Let's go to the slicer setting and right now it is single select. I can say show all. So I'll get a select all button. After the slicer setting, I can jump to the shapes and the current shape is rectangle, rounded rectangle. I can make it rounded rectangle and or I can customize the style the way I want it. So I can say, okay, top corners let them be a little bit rounded so left corner right rounded let me also round the right corner now let's go to the layout layout alignment we can say vertical and now i'm going to change so number of rows which i want is basically 10 and column is one now you need to make sure that you know when you're giving 10 rows there's sufficient enough space to give it 10 number of rows and then overflow continuous scroll i'll show you the paginated option so if you give the paginated option you will get an arrow below here and you can click on that arrow to go to the next page now i like the scroll one but let me show you one more option which is horizontal so in this case the buttons uh, will come horizontally now get, let's get into the callout values. See, the interesting thing is I can remove the callout values altogether. Now, it may be the case when you only wanted to click on image, you may would like to hide the callout value completely. We'll check it out later. Let's go to the next one, which is label. And I'm going to add a label, so I switch it on. And I'm going to bring in the icons here. I can bring in some other column, but right now I have icons. So I'm going to bring in the icon. And now the position I can say above value or below value that's I can decide there's no right and left for at least for this one uh, but I think I'm liking the above one so I'm going to keep it here a uh, vertical spacing I can reduce it if I want it nearby then comes to the next option image which we have seen and um, in the image we need to add another column and I'm going to bring in this time the brand image I created these image and loaded it and you see there's something appearing here not visible and this is because of the size let me showcase you this now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do few changes first of all I'm going to bring it onto the left and then instead of fill let me say fit or let me say normal so I normal is more suitable here I can reduce the width a little bit here now spacing between the images we can reduce or increase if you want image area size is 50% or less. So I think in this case, because I don't have a bigger image, I can reduce it a little bit. And this seems a little bit better to me in this case. Let me set the 
overflow style is continuous scroll. So op now let's look at the button options. So uh, default style, hover style, press style or selected like selected right now you've seen what it is coming. Do you want a border on or not? So when it is selected, I can say border is off. So you, you will not be able to see the border when it is selected. Uh, you can change the fill. So right now it's showing black color. I can go ahead and change that color. So you can see that the different color is coming uh, when on the fill when I'm selecting it. Then similarly shadow, I can switch on the shadow. Uh, seems I need more space if I have shadow glow. If you want glow again, I need a little bit more space for that. Accent bar, it is going to show you this in the front. And this is selected setting. Now, if you say press setting or default setting, like if I need accent bar in the default setting, then I can go ahead and check that. Then every um, value we're going to show the accent bar. So you might come across a question how to make it multi select. Uh, so to make it multi select, what you need to do is you need to go to the option single select and switch it off. So the option has been simplified. So the moment you switch off the single select, it become multi select. And after that, you can make it multi select just by clicking. If you remember, we were not able to use shadow and uh, glow because we have taken too many buttons on the page and we need to reduce that number uh, to make sure that we are able to get shadow and uh, glow. So let's go to the um, layout and reduce the number of rows to let's say six. And now we should get sufficient enough space to use glow and shadow. So I go down into the buttons with the default setting. I'll say shadow and now you can see the shadow and I also say glow. You are able to see the glow and there are additional settings like, you know, where you want the shadow, you want outside or inside, you want bottom right or left. And similarly for the glow, there are setting like outside, inside and position uh, you can choose. So you can go ahead and try these options out. There are multiple such options available with you. So one of the thing which we decided previously that we are going to experiment is we are going to remove this value. What happens? So we removed the value. Let's remove the label. Now you only have the icons. So let me make it a little bit smaller. So you have the items which can be identified with the images. Then it's a good option that you actually don't need any text around that. And to see whether it is working or not, let's have quickly have a visual on, let's say brand name and imagine that and let's have table visual. Now let me filter. See, so we can filter brand one, brand 10. I can add brand 11. I can add brand 12. So in this manner, you can go ahead and you know, filter the data only using the images. I have used some small, small icon in the images and they, they can work. So really interesting feature here. Now I have buttons, which doesn't have a text. Now, one more thing which we have seen there in the documentation is tooltip. And if you go here on the properties, the generic properties, you do have a tooltip here. And then we can give a report page right now. Right now we don't have a report page, which can become tooltip. So why don't we go ahead and create one? So let me click on a new page and let me call it as tool tip. Um, in the on object interaction, uh, you have to go to the page information and say page type as a tooltip. Now it will give you a smaller page. If you want, you can create a bigger one and then you can control uh, show tool tip on which I don't want to do right now. The only simplest thing I want to do is category and category wise net I want. And let, let's go ahead and use this visual on our button visual button slicer. So let's use this on button slicer. So I go to the properties. So in the tool tip. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace this auto with tool tip page and let's see what happens. So now you can see that I'm able to see the tool tips on my button itself. So you have a lot of options to explore around this simple visual and you can take your visualization experience to the next level and go ahead and try that out. Do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.